I was experimenting with scikit-learn to develop a neural network for my game and I was a bit puzzled about how I could apply the result afterwards. In my last video I used pickle to store the model in a file. Pickle is a library that converts any object in Python into a binary file, as if you were to dump the contents of RAM into your hard disk. Then you can reload the object and start using it. You don't even need to import the library that created the object, in this case scikit-learn. The model just works. Pico is a very flexible tool, useful in different situations, and it is what comes up the most when you google around. But it wasn't what I really wanted. I would like to be able to change the values of the neural network, for example, by means of a genetic algorithm. With Pickle I can reuse the model, but scikit-learn doesn't seem to have the functionality to manually adjust the values of the bias and weights of the neural network. Or suppose you created your model in Python with the data you collected and then you want to integrate the trained model into a system that was written in another language. How could this be done? The best alternative I found is to extract the parameter values from the neural network and re-implement the prediction function from scikit-learn, that is, the forward pass function. To get the parameters is relatively easy. The weights are assessed through the coefs attribute, which returns a list of arrays and similarly, the intercepts attribute returns a list of arrays with all biases. In addition, you need to know which activation functions were used, like relu and softmax. All this information can be stored in a simple text file, which can also contain other relevant information such as the amount of input parameters, hidden layers and outputs. From there you can do whatever you want with the model, change the values of the weights and biases and use it in other programs or systems. But to use the model you will need at least the functionality to make predictions from new input data. And this is not that complicated. If you want to understand it in more detail, I recommend the series Neural Networks from Scratch from Syntax. But I will present it briefly here. We have an array of inputs, a vector. These values are processed by the layers and the output of one layer becomes the input of the subsequent layer, until we get to the output layer. To do the layer calculation, inputs are multiplied with their weights and summed with biases, which can be done with loops, which go through each layer, each element and each weight manually. First I will start by making a loop that goes through each layer of the neural network, which is the size of the list of biases or the list of weights. I will loop through each element in the current layer. I will initialize the output of the element with a value equal to 0 and then, with a new loop, I go through each of the weights of this element, which are related to each one of the inputs, multiply the two and do the sum. Here it is good to be a bit careful with the weights indexes, because they are in a slightly different order, with transposed values, because it was made for matrix calculations, which I will cover later. After the summation we can add the bias and apply the activation function, relu, which is the rectifier linear unit, turning negative values into zeros, except for the output layer. The final value is then saved in the output list and after passing through all the elements of the layer, the outputs become the inputs of the next step. If I don't want to know the probabilities of each class, I can return the index of the output with the maximum value as the result of the model prediction. But to calculate the probabilities, let's apply the softmax activation function, which will put all the values in the range 0 to 1. I will create a new list to store the values and with the Euler number and the maximum value of the inputs, which are the outputs of the last hidden layer, I will calculate the values, first subtracting the maximum and then doing the exponentiation. Then with a new list and a new loop, the probabilities are calculated, dividing the values by the sum. This is basically what happens in a neural network forward pass function. Of course, in many cases the activation functions will be different, it, but then it is easy to replace them. But there is an easier way to do it, with numpy's dot function, which does the inner product, which is basically matrix multiplication. I'm still going to make a loop that goes through each of the layers, but only doing the inner product between the input vector and the weight matrix of each layer. 
To apply the relu activation function, just use numpy's maximum function, which will replace negative values by zero. For the softmax function, I can subtract the maximum value from the array and then make the exponentiation, leaving all values in the range 0 to 1. And to calculate the probabilities of each class, just divide each value by the sum of all of them. As you can see, it is much simpler and more compact when you are using NumPy. And to finish, I will run the functions I implemented and compare them with the respective scikit-learn methods, just to demonstrate that the results are in fact identical. Well, now we can train a model with scikit-learn and use it elsewhere, without any problems, including being able to make adjustments to the model through techniques that are not covered by scikit-learn, such as genetic algorithms. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you are not subscribed yet, subscribe, like, share and I see you in the next video.